Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Asanka Howard, and I am the Interim Assistant Dean of Business Services and Workforce Development and Executive Director of the 10,000 Small Businesses Program. So we thank you for joining us during this session. I'll have my colleague introduce myself. Um, so as I said, my name is Sandra McGee. I am the Internship Manager for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Fellows Program at the Barbie Community College. So you hear about student retention and engagement with small businesses, but it's also about recruitment efforts. I know some of our colleges are having some difficulty with recruitment, but what a great way to have students come to your college if they know they're going to have aid internships. And that's what we're going to talk about, this unique program that was funded by Goldman's, the Goldman Sachs Foundation with our 10,000 small businesses program. So we're going to provide an overview of that program. We'll discuss some of the technology that we use to engage with our students, the impact that the program has had on both the students and the businesses, uh, lessons learned. So throughout the program, we've identified some gaps and how we've attempted to address them. And lastly, we'll give you a highlight of the best practices for future application. And as we go through this presentation, I want you to think about how you can replicate some of this in your own institutions or all of it. We don't mind if you steal it. Okay. So the program overview is really Goldman Sachs came to LaGuardia Community College Adult and Continuing Education almost over 13 years ago to develop an entrepreneurship education program to teach the small businesses within the tri state area. So since then at LaGuardia, we have served maybe about 1,300 or more small businesses, but as an, an initiative, it's over 13,000. So guess what? Small businesses have, and many businesses have a problem with what? Finding employees, identifying. And with internships, you don't normally go to a small business. You usually look at a bigger firm. You don't normally look at small businesses. So this workforce development initiative was piloted along with three other schools at LaGuardia Community College. Now, mind you, we only wanted to do it at LaGuardia Community College, but they wanted it to be at other locations. And so it's 12 weeks and the students get paid. They get paid $20 an hour. And Goldman wanted us to reach, which we thought was a lot, 100 students per year. But in New York, we don't know, we don't, we don't pay attention too much to that. We always meet the challenge. So it's 100 students. We started the fall of 2021 through spring 2023. This is our fourth cohort that we're getting ready to start in a couple of weeks. It's a win-win for students and for the business owner. One, students get an opportunity to practice what they've learned in class. The business owner, get what they don't have to pay for. Um, it's real-world experience. It's a uh, talent pipeline. And the fact that the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses program is at LaGuardia Community College, it only makes sense to tap into our students. We could not have done it alone. Now, mind you, in New York, it's below zero. <laughs> <laughs> but we are presenting on behalf of our team. So you have Sandra, who, we, who you've met. She's our internship manager, MJ Escobar Collins. She is the guru of operations. There's no one else who could have done it better. Pro, uh, Frederick John is our program manager, and Erica Carrera, and our administrative associate. What makes this program unique? Most colleges have a career development office, is, but our program is unique in that we match them. Um, students have to apply and business owners have to apply. One of the things that we really stress with our small business owners is that you're not just hiring help. The goal is to mentor and to coach and students, you want to be, you want to work in a small business. Some students want to work at a bigger corporation, but these students particularly wanted to work in small businesses. What we've also found is that some of our uh, students were entrepreneurial. They came from entrepreneurial families. Some of them had businesses. Some of them wanted to start businesses. So it was a good match. And so they applied, we reviewed. Um, there's a one-to-one -one, uh, phone call with screening. The businesses have to have a job description and in that job description, it must show how they're going to mentor. Now the business owner may not be able to have the time so they can have a supervisor. 
mentor, but it's important that they just don't treat them like an employee. It's an it's a, a educational experience. Then the match happens, right? The, the businesses are involved in interviewing, right? We, we just don't want to say, okay, well, we found these students and here you go, right? <laughs> Entrepreneurs don't want to hear that. Remember, they're CEOs, they're in charge. Doesn't matter if it's a small business or not. So they interview, but on Sandra's end, she makes sure that the students know that they're interviewing too. And our students are empowered to interview. They're empowered to, once they're in the internship, to challenge in a nice way the small business owner and to provide them with information. As I mentioned, it's a, it's a two year pilot, cohorts one through four. On average, we had 140 students apply. 50 were accepted, 135 businesses applied, and 39 were accepted. And what we found is some business owners took three. And we also found that some applications, some uh, job descriptions weren't appropriate. And so that's why they didn't be, they weren't accepted into the program. 30% of our fellows identified as male, 66% identified as female, and the range is from 17 to 61. Industries, so IT companies, um, you notice uh, professional services, 39%. So that could be legal or accounting services, coaching services, and so forth. Functionings could be accounting, but you notice the number 31, marketing, especially as a result of the pandemic. Businesses really needed help with social media marketing and marketing on a whole. And within our business and technology department at the college, we were able to help them with our marketing students. Passing it over to my colleague. All right. So jumping into the technology that we use specifically to share learning, share knowledge with our students, and also collaborate with them and allow them to collaborate with one another. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the panel, 55% of our internships were fully remote, 36% were hybrid, 8% of them or actually in person. And if we're looking at this as a whole, our students are all at different small businesses, different locations. And if they're working from home specifically and working remotely, it can be really easy for them to be separated or feel separated from the program itself and feel siloed from the other students that are participating at the same time. So we wanted to create a virtual environment in which students could communicate with one another, collaborate with one another and connect because I mean, thinking about what Asanta just said about 30% of those opportunities being marketing, those students are at different small businesses. They could collaborate and share that information with one another of what's working and what's not at their sites. Um, so Basecamp itself is a project management and communication tool. It advertises itself as being refreshingly simple. And so what we found is from our students and business owners that despite whatever technological background they have, they also find it to be user-friendly and intuitive. If you wanted to implement Basecamp into your institutions, it is free for K through 12 schools, it's free for universities, and if you're a nonprofit organization, they also offer a great discount. What's the name of the Basecamp. Basecamp. Yes. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. You mentioned how many hours the students work per week. 20 hours per week. Okay, 15 to 20. Because you know some students can't work the full twenty, so we allow the fifteen to twenty. Um, and if there's special circumstances, we'll address those individually. But maximum of twenty per week. All right. So Basecamp itself can be downloaded as an application, so it can be on a phone, on a tablet, um, and on the go. So we thought perfect place for us to deliver some micro learning. Um, micro learning education is small, bite-sized chunks of easily digestible material. It should be short because it's targeted and focused on mostly one key learning point that you'd like to make. It's cost effective, again, because it's short, it should be easy to deliver. It's delivered strategically just when the learner needs it. So I'll provide some examples of that. It should have an engaging component. It should be mobile friendly. So again, so that the learner can interact with it when it's best for them, what makes the best sense for them, especially thinking about our community at the community college. Many of our students have children, so 10 p.m. at night might be the best time for them to engage in a learning material. And because of all this combined, studies suggest 
that microlearning itself increases knowledge retention by 80% because, again, it's key focus on one learning goal. And the students are interacting with it when it's most convenient for them to focus on it. So an example of this is early on in the first cohort, we noticed students who were able to assess their capacity, so what they have on their plate, thinking school, internship, families, jobs, students who were able to assess that and communicate that with their supervisors had the most success. If a student was overwhelmed, we might find out too late when they've already dropped the ball on some of their tasks. So we developed this to start being delivered in the second cohort. It's a four minute, less than four minute video that tackles the idea of communicating your capacity. We provide students with short description and examples of what it means to be at capacity, under capacity, and over capacity. And then we guide them through a thought exercise and reflection exercise in which they think about their own capacity and how they can communicate that with their supervisor. So if you see on this side of the screen right here, our students, after they watch the video, the activity is to um, share what their capacity is. They're all able to see their responses. So again, we're creating that cohort feel. I'm over capacity and now I see I'm not the only one. Um, we wanna get through a lot of those psychological barriers that our students encounter thinking, is there something wrong with me? I'm not getting enough work at my internship. Why is this? I'm getting too much work. Maybe I can't handle everything as well as other students. And it also allows us to see what's going on at all these separate internship sites. And we, yes. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and so we can um, address that if needed, whether it's speaking to our students to provide them coaching, advocating for them with the business owner who may not understand everything that the student is balancing. And so for that just in time, we deliver this micro learning and we make it available to them. After two weeks, the internship has started, just as we expect the school work to pick up and the internship work to pick up. Now, micro learning does not have to be a video. It can also be a quiz. It can be an infograph. It's a short chunk of learning with a specific goal. And so this example really quickly is just an infograph we created to help students understand what factors to document as far as their accomplishments go as they think about their resumes, their LinkedIn's, and future interviews. And again, we ask them to share one of their accomplishments that they've reflected using that infograph. Um, and again, we are all able to see this, so we are collecting success stories and wins that we can share with leadership within our college, our internal and external partners, because um, it's exciting, it gets people excited about the program. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Who developed the, uh, the video on this program? Because, um... so, <laughs> so I have a background in learning and development. I used to work in um, training leaders at Northwell, which is a large hospital group in New York. And so this video, you can make something like that on PowerPoint, but there's a program called the Room. It's free. It allows you to record your screen, your face, like the video camera, and the voice. So the students are watching a presentation, but they also see me at the bottom corner. So again, that connection that we want to feel. So, uh, so uh, you pay the students, or does the brand pay the students? So Goldman Sachs funded us to provide stipends to. Uh, they gave they gave LaGuardia the award. Yes. And Eight students. Yes. And were there any risk management issues that you had to deal with the students? Yeah. What happens if the student says, I went to this small business and they sexually harassed me? What 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 would what would that happen? What, that, that would create a liability for the body, you know? Because I'll, I'll just go yeah, ahead. Sorry. There is a Oh, I'm the president, so I gotta worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Central has an insurance policy that covers students in activities that are connected. To oh, okay. okay. So it does extend to that. But that, that is a very good point. No, no, I mean, we do service learning and, and we have to have an MOU and we assess you know risk, right? Because we don't want an employee or even a service learning a supervisor to do anything to our student that would place us, I mean, obviously it hurt the student, but also then create the liability for the institution. 
All right, and this and, and the businesses are vetted by Goldman Sachs. Oh, so to okay. be a part of the Goldman Sachs program, got it. There's a background check, big, big and so yeah. with the wraparound services that we have, that's why we are so connected yeah. to the students yeah. and the business owners to ensure that both parties are comfortable and safe. Right. Yeah. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Um, just want to share how probably is the logistics in Puerto Rico for the high school students that they participate in the internship program. Uh, occupational, like vocational school, the student, they make the internship there. And in Puerto Rico, the, in the school, the student is a student. In the place, probably figure as employee. What does that mean? The state required to that place to give all the honor, privilege, and benefit as employee. Example, uh, Accident uh, covered uh, insurance. Um, the labor department is monitored about the student hours. Minors, if they can work before this hour or after this one, the time there that do not affect the, the school. Some, and some laws and regulations that apply for regular employee apply for that student too. So that being the sexual harassment had uh, probably happened with the student in the place. But the legally concept, the legally rules, and the laws of regulation protection for the employee apply to the student too. Additional to the school environment, laws and regulations that apply, and the places employer has to know that employee was a minor and applied what the state regulation plus the Department of Education regulation. Yeah, I think early on in the development of the program, we did have those conversations about what how the students are covered while they're mm -hmm. out of the pro well outside of those sites. Luckily we haven't had any incidences mm -hmm. and so hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> um, so on top of using it to deliver those micro learnings, um, we also use it to collaborate and network and have a space where students feel empowered to share with one another and ask for help if necessary. So this is just an example of the chat group. Um, there's a large group for all the students. We're not covering it today, but there's also a large group for the small businesses. So they're also engaging with one another on base camp, um, but we're focusing on the students today. So some of the examples of how students are using this is there's a message board. Usually it's me letting them know what's going on, what the next steps are of the process, if there's an event coming up, but they're also able to update that. They're able to update the calendar. And so here's an example of a student that's posting on the message board and asking, if anyone else at their internship sites is using this CRM platform HubSpot that they are new to at their business. What ended up happening is this student connected with three other students that were working at three different small businesses in three different industries and were able to collaborate and work with one another throughout the semester on how they're using HubSpot at their individual sites. Another example is a student created a message board where they all typed in their LinkedIn account so they could connect after the internship is complete. And one of our students um, shared a podcast episode from her small business, providing with tips and strategies on updating your LinkedIn. So you can see they're supporting each other while they're in the internship program and beyond. Back to Asansa. Okay, so let's talk about impact, right? That's most important. According to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, 40% of college students participate in internships. Less than 6% of Hispanic students participate in internships. But guess what? 40% of fellows who participated in LaGuardia's program identified as Hispanic. Being a Hispanic serving institution with about 8,000 students from 30 different countries, this is phenomenal. It's important, I mentioned that it's important that the students find impactful work. 87% stated that it was meaningful work. 83% said they gained skills and knowledge. Right, because it should be mentorship, coaching, learning something. It's an educational experience. 81% of our business owners stated that they cre it created value for their businesses. So one thing that's unique about the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses alumni is they're very picky. <laughs> they want Yale students. They want Harvard students and Rutgers students. Community college students, 
81% said it added value, and they did. They hired our students. Our students not only challenged them, help them with their small businesses, help them think about things in a different way. So this number is very impactful. Okay. So as we mentioned, throughout this program, we identified some gaps. And one of them being a gap in our students' professional development, specifically their soft skills. So we noticed this during the first cohort, for example, students that we spoke to that were great, that we knew would be impactful in the program, um, based on their previous experience, based on their passions. But then when it was time for the interview, they did not know how to convey that to the employer and were not selected for the internship. Um, so we developed this professional development curriculum. Again, we want to make sure we're delivering these strategically. So we're covering interview skills, time management, communication, feedback mindset, and personal brand and vanity. So as I mentioned, interview skills we deliver to the students even prior to them being selected for the program. There are students, we care about them and we care about their success. So despite that, some of them don't get into the program, but they're walking away with those interviewing skills. Feedback mindset gets delivered to our students prior to the feedback meeting that the supervisors will have for them. That's so that they're empowered to know that they can provide feedback too. Um, as a student working closely with a CEO, that can be intimidating. So we want to make sure they know they can provide feedback. And we want to make sure that when they're receiving that constructive feedback that can be uncomfortable, that they understand where that constructive feedback comes from and they understand how to leverage that for their success. And lastly, personal branding we deliver as they're exiting the door and thinking about who they are as professionals and how they can share what they've gained from the fellow's experience in future resumes, LinkedIn accounts, and networking opportunities. Another gap we identified was our social media marketing gap. As Asanta mentioned, that marketing number, which was a little over 30%, I wanna say 99% of those opportunities were digital and social media marketing. Our students do learn marketing, but they do not learn specifically digital marketing. So what we did is we looked within the college to see if there was anywhere that we could get resources to better prepare our students for their internships. And what we found was that in the adult and continuing education division, under our career and professional programs, um, we offer a digital marketing training certificate program. So we partnered internally with that department and provided scholarships to our students that were participating in social media marketing opportunities. Now they're completing that semester with a certificate in digital marketing and the experience um, working really as the social media manager. These small companies, small businesses, sometimes they don't have a large social media team. It may just be the students figuring it out as they go with some guidance from their supervisors. Yes. When you say small business, what, what, are, what are we looking at? How many, what's the number of employees? It could be one, two, three. Okay, or 100. Okay, it just really depends. Okay. Another um, curriculum gap we identified was from feedback from our accounting businesses um, and accounting professionals in these small businesses, where they were stating that yes, the students are learning great theory, they're learning great background of what it is to do accounting hands on, but the translation from what's happening in the classroom to what's happening hands on in the, in the working field. There's, there's some misalignment there. So we are just we just heard this converse, a lot of this feedback last semester because we placed a lot of accounting students. And so we're currently in the process of scheduling meetings between faculty at the college and at least one of these small businesses that provided this feedback so that we can best inform curriculum. And if any adjustments need to be made, those are the people in the room that we should have. What software or accounting do you use in your place to teach the class? We don't. I'm not in accounting, so I have no idea what they're. I don't believe what, they use QuickBooks. Okay, so because that means probably they, like you say, they had a theory concept probably manually or something. Yes. So probably to expose the student to the contact or practice with the software mm -hmm. in that area. That is possible. Uh -huh. So we're mm -hmm. hoping to get those results and understand what's going on when those meetings come up. But I'm glad you mentioned that. Our businesses also notified us that aside from the internship, when they're looking for employees, they are looking for. Either they're an accounting firm or they need accounting support in their business. Mm -hmm. They're looking for part time or full time employees that are proficient in this program called QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so 
they're having a hard time finding those candidates. Again, looking into adult and continuing education at our college, we have a QuickBooks certificate training program. So we have the talent. Now we identify them as an employer partner that potentially if they're looking, they know to come to us and we have students that are learning this or alumni that have completed this training program. And so Asante and I speak here with big smiles on our faces because we are very excited about this program and what's happened so far. And we really do think that it's best practices should be replicated. And we're very open to speak with anyone who wants more information on the program. But to highlight some of those best practices, one of them came from partnering for recruitment. Um, I had a grad school professor that constantly, constantly told us people support what they help create. And that really stuck with me. So we wanted to meet, when Goldman Sachs came to us to develop this program, we wanted to meet with our internal partners. So with academic departments, career services, college special student and programs and clubs so that we can get their support, their buy-in, and of course their knowledge. They have, many of them work one-to-one -one with the students and know who the students are. And so we wanted to give them that seat at the table so that we can hear their voices. And so they gave us a lot of thoughts Many of them wanted to refer students directly, so we created a process for that. And um, what we found from that is that we had engaged members throughout the college advocating for our program. The individualized matching process. So Asante gave a little overview about what that is, but to dive in deeper, this is just a condensed version of what the applications consist. But we're looking at the student areas of interest, their major, what their goals are, their skills, and what skills they want to gain, as well as what the business is looking for in their intern and what value they will add to the fellow. That's all great, but if the logistics don't work, that match is not going to work either. So we're looking at that and we're also looking at the student's availability, what's their school schedule looking like, what's the business schedule like, does it overlap? Does the student prefer to work remote because they have a child they have to pick up from school in the middle of the day? Does the business operate remote? Do they have access to a computer? And if they don't and they need it, does that business provide equipment? So I wanted to provide a quick um, example. And again, this is just a snapshot of what these applications really look like. The reason why I put this up here is because it really stuck to me. I spoke to the student one-on-one -on -one as I call every single student that's qualified for the program. So I could really get to know them because some of the applications are not strong. But once I get them on the phone, they're powerhouses. And I spoke to this travel tourism and hospitality management major, and he was so passionate about the travel industry. And he had customer services. He was pitching himself. And the reason why it stuck with me is because I panicked a little. It's like, don't remember ever seeing a travel-related opportunity in previous cohorts. So I kept that student in the back of my mind. And then I run into this opportunity, travel by design, looking for a travel support coordinator, looking for a student with customer service and curious and interested about travel. This student was all in on travel. <laughs> um, the student preferred a remote work, the business operated remotely. So in my imagination, in my mind, and with the experience that we've gone through, I thought perfect match. I matched them one-to-one, -one, but I didn't think they needed to speak to anyone else. I was correct. <laughs> They interviewed, they, so after the interview process, both the student and the business provide feedback. So the student does not have to take the opportunity if they don't feel it's a good fit. Feedback came back, both said yes, and they will start their internship February 13th. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then another aspect that we think is extremely important in this, pro in this program, um, specifically with us being a community college, and a lot of our students being first generation students, a lot of our students um, being uh, having part time, full time jobs, families, is having all these points where we are connecting with students and learning who they are while we're providing them with support. So, relevant and timely training is delivered to both students and businesses, individualized coaching when needed, bi weekly check in calls, which I do with every single student that participates in the program. And we have office hours for the businesses by weekly, weekly service for the students and monthly service for both the students and the business. Now, this seems like a lot of touch points, but I, we believe strongly that a lot of our students face psychological barriers that keep them from participating in these types of programs. Um, we were just talking about this. The name Goldman Sachs 
kind of sounds exciting, but it freaks a lot of our students out because they didn't think that they were the types of students that could be affiliated with a pro with a name like Goldman Sachs. And so the support is really important, but we want to emphasize the importance of paid internships as well. Paid unpaid internships run the risk of unequal socioeconomic and racial representation because they can be afforded only by students who can afford to work for free for months at a time. And the correlation between socioeconomic status, race, and ethnicity is there. So you're leaving out a large group of students from participating in these programs. Uh, so understanding this, as we see here, and this does reflect what our community college looks like. A lot of our students have full-time and part-time jobs. A lot of our students have children. And so if we're not providing them with that support of understanding who they are, um, I don't think that we have that diversity, those big numbers that we have of Hispanic students, um, because it's not even just unpaid. It's also paid internships. Um, because of those logistical barriers, yes, but also those psychological barriers. Now, 40%, as I mentioned, identify as Hispanic. 50% of our fellows identify as first-generation students. Now, the National Association of Colleges and Employers has found that even with paid internships, a larger portion of them go to white students, male students, and non-first-generation students. And those paid internships are actually more valued by employers. There's something about being paid to do a job. What's the name of the organization that that is? National Association for Colleges yeah, and Employers. Yeah, thanks. National Association for Colleges and Employers. Um, so they conduct student surveys, I think, yearly. Um, so if it were not for the support that we provide and the fact that it's paid put together, our students may not have been able to move past those barriers that are in front of them. Um, I want to make sure I hit these points to that, this last slide. Um, and so, paid, benefit, paid internships, our students are benefiting from them, higher post-graduation employment rates, and the college is benefiting as well. Because um, national evidence and analysis has shown paid internships benefit the college by enhancing their reputation in, within their community. It attracts students, as we've mentioned, um, it increases retention rates, it increases graduation rates, and it strengthens the ties that the community college has with uh, the community, with industry partners, and with the students that are currently participating in the college. And lastly, because I come from career services, it also enhances the efforts and works hand in hand with a lot of the efforts of um, the career services departments at colleges. So I want to leave you with a face and a name to the program so you can see a little bit about what our students are like. Questions. <laughs> yes, could you talk a little bit uh, about the team at Memoria that does this? Do you get funding also for yeah. from both sides yes. for that team? Yes. And so, because we have the ten thousand small businesses program, what Goldman wanted to do was only fund the internship manager position. So our director of operations and strategic initiatives, she worked with the small business owners. And you know, uh, Frederick, who's the program manager, he assisted her with that. So it's the existing team plus one. 
So, so, so you're the authors of what? So we're, we are within the Division of Continuing Education okay. Business Services. So I know I mentioned to you both before um, with regards to working with undocumented students, and I know you mentioned that there are some undocumented students that are within the internship. Can you talk about that process as far as like payment because of their status and how do they get paid? And does the payment come through Goldman Sachs or to LaGuardia? So the payment, the Goldman pays the our foundation. We actually have a LaGuardia foundation, and foundate and the foundation disperse the money. You maybe could share a little more. Yes, so specifically to our international students who are not able to pay taxes in the United States, we issue them the W-8 forms, and so we pay the college, the LaGuardia Community College Foundation pays the taxes on behalf, so they receive their stipends. With already taxes taken out. So, so these forms. Sorry, go ahead. So the undocumented students, do they have to have DACA status to participate? From our experience so no. far, no, because again, this is a. Even though they are outside of the college, as far as where they're participating, it's an in-college activity. Your college offer is only for business, or you have another? subjects a topic career that oh, oh yeah so Carla is a creative writing major she's under the English department and she wanted to participate in this program to see how creative writing can you know aside from being an author how she can leverage that so from my conversations with her at the initial phone call that's when we thought maybe marketing would be great for her okay. because she can use those creative writing skills as you saw travel tourism management major we've had film majors participate um so there's a broad you know, whatever the small businesses are looking for, we can find them a student. Uh, so it's really about we're using all the majors within the college. And that's really important because it's transferable skills. Yeah. Right. How do you take your college degree and then apply for a job? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Um, you mentioned something about a uh, certificate uh, in digital marketing. Is that something that the students have to? A separately for is it, or is that scholarship? Which the students didn't have to pay for it. So and the scholarship comes from a separate from a, a different fund. Yeah, there was a grant funded program that offered scholarships. Okay. What did you want to say? There was a generations is the name of the organization the JFF, and they funded us for a now third cycle of this year. Michael mentioned. So it's a crossover connections from program to program. Yeah. So we, we have a school of entrepreneurship, it's the only school of entrepreneurship in California. And I can see them running this program. You know, I mean, obviously, you got to find the money to do it. Right? You have to find the money, but you also can just tap into your local business community. Right. Right, they right. might be able to fund it. They right. might be able to pay for it. This is right. just one model. No, right. Uh, and being that they are entrepreneurs, it's right. the school of entrepreneurship, they can come up with some ideas. Yeah. Right. So, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, Dennis, He's our president. <laughs> Already a great presentation, but I'm a little biased. Um, you know, I I don't. I, I'm sorry that I was a little late. Um, but I, but I, and so maybe you, you touched on this, but what I, you know, you know, I'm a huge fan of this program, but I've always been interested in the fact that these are internships with small businesses, not the internships, you know, sometimes at LaGuardia, we have opportunities for internships with large employers and those can be great, but what, how is this different for the student? Because he, she, they is working a paid internship. It said what's 12 weeks? 12 weeks. 12 weeks, right? This is serious. But it's in a small business and you know that are that are closer probably on average size to you know one to ten to maybe fifteen. There's not a lot. I know you said a hundred to ten. You sound like well, a federal government biggest, to say that. Biggest, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, but they're small. These are small, these are yeah. people who took entrepreneurship training, Goldman Sachs, mm -hmm. they, they're startups, right? So again, what's 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 the value add or the difference for the student being a small business? In my opinion, they get a, they get real real world experience, <laughs> right? Because that CEO or the supervisor 
is training along with them in a, in a way. So they get a chance to be in the mind of an entrepreneur or the CEO or the supervisor. We found that our students were able to actually educate our small businesses. And that's a great way to implement what you've learned if you're able to teach it to someone else. And not all cases, right? Some of our firms are a little bigger. So it's really more about them teaching them or having a, a, a common uh, interest and in, in relationship. But I, I believe that it's the intimacy that you get in a smaller business than you would if you went to a bigger firm where you don't get a chance to talk to the CEO. You don't get a chance to participate in the meeting. So they actually feel like it's a lot of value for the students and it's a lot of value for the business owner. And I can share from, from speaking to students, they've told me, wow, I've been able to see almost every single department within this mm -hmm. company. I've been able to see what the accounting does, what the marketing does, what the CEO does. We're at a very large company. Um, they're probably stuck in accounting. They don't meet the leadership. They may not know what other departments at that company do. So they're getting an exposure to lots of different areas. And if maybe they realize, maybe accounting's not exactly what I wanted to do. I saw this aspect of the business and I really like that. Maybe I'll explore that. So those are from conversations that I've had with students throughout the semester. And it probably also makes sense too, because you know a lot of students say, I want to start my own business when mm -hmm. I graduate. Mm -hmm. So what better way to do that than to intern with a yeah. small business and see what it's really about. Yeah. 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 Something very interesting in the educational field, we never know and we cannot measure how we can impact the student. We had the student two years, month, a semester, a bachelor degree with us, but we, we can probably not measure what is the impact in their future. For some of them, because I have that internship program in my school too, it's a great job experience <laughs> that they can increase the resume value. Just to, it's better to, to put something in the resume than to write what. In my case, with my students, I don't have any experience, but you, you can write, I don't have any experience, but the opportunity that you get to probably give to me would be the, the beginning of my professional career. But it probably is better to eliminate that to put what? A one, one career. My, other, my question is what? How is the faculty member feedback uh, with this program, with this internship program? Because the student actually, what the faculty say, how you manage would probably, because like you say, uh, in accounting, to have a experience program with QuickBooks or something, what is the feedback that you have from the faculty members? So I think we're still in the early processes of the feedback that the business owner has for the faculty. But as far as faculty, again, we're still doing the pilot program. We have not circled back and had those conversations, but they continue to send students to us. So we know that they're excited. And so I think we need to continue to have those conversations mm -hmm. with them to see if there's impact even within the classroom. And what we'd like to do as we take a look for ourselves at the university is how we can build even a, a stronger relationship with the faculty and internships, right? Because the faculty at our colleges, they already have internships. They have um, partners with employers already. But for this particular program, we, we think that it's, it's going well because, but as Sandra said, they're constantly sending uh, students to us. They promote for us. You know, we had one uh, faculty, uh, Santo Trapani, in the business and technology department who created a video to talk about, about this program. So they see the value that is adding, you know, to their students. The wraparound, and I think the wraparound services that we provide, you know, to the students, to the business owners, includes the faculty, right? If the student is failing, we know about it, right? We help them. The faculty helps them. Yeah, I think the yeah. wraparound service is really that's what makes us unique and innovative. Uh, unique. Unique. Yeah, yeah. Something one thing to look for as you get more feedback from faculty is, and the, the, the QuickBook example struck me, is when the business talks about specific skills needed to do the work. Um, I had a conversation with a pretty senior person at Google a couple of weeks ago who basically said, You know, your computer science, your computer science faculty. They teach the history of the computer. I don't need that. The first one being pretty critical mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I, I need certain, we need this HR person, specific skills from your laboratory graduates or in the case of an internship. So it's a difference between knowing 
sort of accounting at a theor theoretical level. Which, by the way, beginning accounting is bookkeeping. So QuickBooks is a way to learn bookkeeping, right? right. Um, especially in an AAS program. That's a bookkeeping program, mm -hmm. fundamentally. Mm -hmm. So that QuickBooks comment is about a skill. Don't send me a student. If, if you want to teach them the history of accounting, like whoever invented mm -hmm. the first, you know, spreadsheet, fine. But I don't really care. As a small business owner, I need QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So it's that it's that kind of feedback to faculty about what skills and with Sunil, you and your team having the these certificate programs already on campus. How do you make that connection and help students do both? You know, learn this, learn the, the skills the employer is looking for. Sometimes by going on workshop on Saturday or whatever. But you know, blend that into what's happening in the classroom. And guess what? Yeah. Students know that you are providing that that experience for them. They're gonna want to come to your colleges, right? We hope we're gonna make them. <laughs> <laughs> we know we know how to gloss it up. You can get this X job. You can get this experience. You know, because small businesses, you know, they are the engine of our economy. They're hiring. They're hiring. Yeah. They're not laying off. They're hiring. Yeah. You, you, I think, you know, it's a high impact practice that's ahead. So I think this presentation was excellent. You did a great job. Oh, and, thank uh, you. and I think that the wraparound service does make this unique. Um, I was sharing uh, with my colleague, uh, Carlos, that Governor Newsom in California has created a service program very similar. The state is giving us for 75 students $10,000 per student for them to do service, and in this case, uh, to school districts, a low performing school district. So it's, not, it's a paid internship, but actually providing a service to, uh, to school districts that are struggling, or students that are struggling with K 12 students. That's good. Yeah. So, so but this is. I got a lot of good ideas. Oh, good. Good, good. Any other questions? President, you should be very proud. <laughs> good job. That probably is an evidence and reason to increase the salary. <laughs> question in the chat. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, okay. Probably they support my comment. They support my comment. <laughs>